How did you learn your craft? My, my wife's great-grandfather was a broom maker, and I had broom makers in my family tree. And unfortunately, they passed before we learned any specific uh, pieces of, of the broom making craft. But we were lucky enough to find a place that we were able to go uh, take a, a craft class. Uh, and for the last 30 years, I've been making brooms full time and now teaching brooms. And uh, it's really, for me, uh, a way to pass on you know, the experiences that I've had in the past 30 years uh, to, to other people. What do you have in your hands there, Gary? Uh, I have a broom needle. It belonged to my wife's uh, great-grandfather, who was John David Burns, and he made brooms in Bath County, Virginia, probably around 1900. And um, this is the needle that he used to, to sew his brooms flat, and um, I've been able to sort of revive it, and I use it in my, my broom making. And it is one of the uh, rarest tools that I have. And uh, I, I really enjoy using it. And it uh, feels like you're, you have a, a piece of the past in your hands when you're doing it. Is there a place for traditional crafts in today's society? Well, I think it's very important to carry on the traditional crafts because, I mean, it was a part of how people survived were, you know, they were able to use their hands and produce what they needed. And in today's society, we, uh, I think, sometimes forget what, you know, people had to do in the past. And we take it for granted that, you know, everything is totally convenient and everything is totally accessible. Part of how we developed as, as human beings was to be independent, sort of able to do things for ourselves. And I think that it's somewhat rewarding to be able to take a, a raw material like broom corn and then assemble it into something like, like a turkey wing broom, which is very, you know, very nice to look at, but it's also extremely functional broom. There's no separation between whether it's, it's pretty or whether it's useful, it's both. And what materials do you use? Well, we use various uh, parts of the broom corn plant. Uh, this is raw broom corn, the way that it comes out of the field. And it is a very durable plant, very flexible plant. And this is a seed bearing part of the plant covered with seeds. And when you clean the seeds off, you have all of these wonderful fine tips, which are great for sweeping up dust, dirt, any, anything you might want to sweep up. Very, very flexible. And then you have this part of the plant, which you can use to attach it to a handle. Or when I make the hand brooms, you use this to do the weaving uh, on the, the tops of the hand brooms. How long have we been growing broom corn in the U.S.? Broom corn has been, you know, part of, of this country uh, since colonial times before. And so people have always been used this product to make brooms out of. Uh, early on, a lot of the brooms that were made were actually, you know, this type of broom, which were very smaller hand brooms, which were made for very specific uses, clothing brushes, upholstery brushes. Uh, different things, really fine brushes. It, it became a, a plant that was used for every type of broom you could possibly think of. How does the construction of a broom affect its function? Uh, most brooms, uh, early brooms, were, fit, were round like this. And it's, it's a good broom. It's, it's not nearly as efficient as a broom like this because you don't have as much sweeping area. Well, this is, you know, the, the style of this broom is fanned out, you know, sort of resembles a wing. So traditionally, it's always been called a turkey wing broom. But to me, the, the great part of this broom is when you assemble it, it becomes a flat broom. You add nine different sections of broom corn, and as you add it, 
it just naturally fans out and it becomes an efficient design, but it's also a, a beautiful design. And so, you know, it's part of what I think of when I think of traditional crafts, they were always sort of meant to be used. They were not, you know, something that you were just gonna uh, have just to look at, but they were beautiful, many of you. Think of quilts and baskets and a lot of the really beautiful traditional crafts. They, they were meant to be used every day. And so uh, brooms, you know, are really no different than that. You know, you, you, you want to put it together, a good, sturdy, functional, but nice looking product. So that's what I try to do when I, when I make brooms and when I teach broom classes, that's what I try to communicate. You do. Thank you, Gary. Thank you.